Hello and welcome to this third video presentation for Level 2 Chemistry on Equilibrium Principles. This is an important one to watch, often more than once, as the principles covered in this video can be very confusing for many students. One of the key learning outcomes in this video is to identify which direction the equilibrium reaction will shift when a change is applied to it, and the three conditions which affect the equilibrium reaction are concentration, temperature and pressure. It is too big to cover all three in depth in one go, so we'll just focus on the first one, concentration, in this video, and cover temperature and pressure in the final equilibrium video. So what we will be learning about is applying a principle called Le Chatelier's principle, after the French chemist Henri Le Chatelier, who carried out this work on equilibrium reactions. This principle predicts what an equilibrium reaction does when you effect a change to it. You don't have to quote this principle, just be able to apply it. The Chatelier's principle is, when a change is applied to an equilibrium system, the reaction will move in the direction that minimises or reverses this change. In a nutshell, this means that when you do something to an equilibrium system, the system will respond in such a way that reverses what you did to it and undo that change essentially the opposite. Let's begin. Starting with looking at the effect of changing concentration on an equilibrium reaction, and there are four effects of this to consider. We will consider each one in turn. The first of these is to consider the effect of changing the concentration of one of the reactants. Increasing the concentration of a reactant upsets the equilibrium ratio which is the value of the equilibrium constant, and this will decrease. This diagram shows the effect of this. The first diagram shows the equilibrium position of two jars, the left jar being the reactants and the right jar being the products, with the equilibrium ratio represented by the levels of the water in the two jars. And of course this is a static state, so it's good to show an equilibrium. What happens if you pour more water into the reactants jar shown here. The rate of the forward reaction will increase, so the equilibrium will shift towards the products and reverse this change and use up those additional reactants. So in other words, the rate of the forward reaction will increase, so the water will flow from the reactants jar towards the products jar and make more products. Doing this will restore the equilibrium balance in the jars. But note that the levels of water in both of the jars after the change will actually be different than the levels of the water in the jars before. Even though equilibrium has been restored, the concentrations of reactants and products will now be slightly different than before, but the value of the equilibrium constant will have stayed the same. Let's look at an equilibrium reaction. This reaction is called the Haber process, which is a really important reaction for the industrial production of ammonia, which is used to make fertilisers. When you increase the concentration of hydrogen, this will upset the equilibrium ratio. To restore the equilibrium, the hydrogen must be decreased, so the equilibrium must shift to the right towards the products and use up that additional hydrogen. This will result in more ammonia being made. Let's have a look at this on a rate graph. On the rate graph it would look like this. The initial equilibrium concentrations for the system are these. Nitrogen, ammonia and hydrogen. When you add hydrogen it increases up to here. And this will upset the equilibrium ratio. So the rate of the forward reaction will increase and the equilibrium will shift to the right to minimise the effect of this change. This will result in an increase in the concentration of ammonia, seen here, and a decrease in the concentration of the nitrogen and the hydrogen as the ammonia was being made. And you can see the decrease in hydrogen here, and the decrease in nitrogen here. When the equilibrium is re-established, the concentrations of the gases are different than before, and you can see that in the different levels of the lines, but the ratio of these concentrations, in other words, the value of the equilibrium constant, will now be the same as before. Equilibrium has been restored. 
So in summary, changing the concentration of a reactant pushes the equilibrium towards the products. The second concentration effect is to decrease the concentration of a reactant. So let's look at the jars again. This time we're going to remove some water from the reactants jar here, which is removing or decreasing the concentration of a reactant. If water is removed from the reactants jar, the rate of the back reaction will increase and water will shift from the right container towards the left container to replace the reactants which were removed. So decreasing the concentration of the reactant will cause the rate of the back reaction to speed up. The reaction will shift towards the reactant side to reverse this change and make more reactants, in other words, to replace what was removed. This will of course cause a decrease in the concentration of products. So in summary, decreasing the concentration of the reactant will cause the equilibrium to shift towards the reactant side. Let's have a look at a reaction to demonstrate this. Here's one you might remember. Well, I hope you do. This is a reaction where, of course, you're taking copper ions with hydroxide ions and forming an insoluble copper hydroxide precipitate. We did these reactions earlier in the year in our ions in solution internal standard. So believe it or not, precipitates form in equilibrium reactions. And you'll recognise this lovely gelatinous blue precipitate of copper hydroxide. This is the equilibrium reaction for the formation of an insoluble blue copper hydroxide from dissolved copper ions and hydroxide ions. We can decrease the concentration of a reactant, in this case the copper ions, by adding ammonium molecules. These will react with the copper ions and form a complex ion. Now you must remember it. Very distinctive reaction. Bright blue colour of the complex ion formed from the reaction of copper ions with ammonia forming the blue complex ion. So now let's look at how that applies to equilibrium principles. Decreasing the concentration of the reactant, in this case the copper ions, causes the equilibrium to shift to the left in order to reverse this change and make more copper ions, in other words replace the ones you took away. This will end up decreasing the amount of the solid copper hydroxide in the mixture as the equilibrium shifts towards the left side. So the copper hydroxide disappears and leaves the clear bright blue solution of the complex ion. In other words, formation of complex ions increases the solubility of the copper hydroxide. We will learn a lot more about this in Level 3 next year. Right, now we're going to play around with the concentration of products. Increasing the concentration of a product will cause the back reaction to speed up. The equilibrium will shift towards the reactant side to reverse or minimise this change and use up those additional products. This will cause an increase in the concentration of reactants. To demonstrate this, let's use a slightly different model. We'll use our seesaw to show it. If we increase the concentration of the products by putting a bigger mass on the side of the seesaw, the equilibrium balance is upset. To restore balance, products get turned into reactants and the reaction shifts towards the left side, in other words the reactant side. This of course will bring the seesaw back to a balanced position and equilibrium is restored. But remember, the concentrations will be slightly different than before, but the equilibrium constant, the value of K, will be the same. Right, last one. Decreasing the concentration of a product will cause the forward reaction to speed up. The equilibrium will shift towards the product side to reverse this change and minimise the effect, and this will restore some of the products. This will cause a decrease in the concentration of the reactants in the equilibrium system. So, let's look at our seesaw model. If the products are reduced by making this box smaller on the seesaw, this will upset the equilibrium balance, so some of the reactants have to get used up to form towards the products, so the reaction will shift to the right, making more products and restoring the equilibrium balance. 
But of course, the final concentrations will be slightly different than before, but the value of the equilibrium constant, K, will be the same. And that's it. That's concentration done. Let's review the effects of changing concentration on an equilibrium system with the summary table. You should pause the video at this point and copy this table out onto your WISC sheet. We will do experiments in class to reinforce the changes in concentration on equilibrium systems and link your observations to these reactions. This should hopefully help you understand it much further. In the next and final video of equilibrium we will cover the other two changes, the effect of changing temperature and the effect of changing pressure.